Okay, uh, one last question, Karan. Yes. Um, so I'm part of uh, uh, Dublin Unified uh, School District's Wellness Committee. Dublin is a city where yeah. I live. And I specifically make programs for mental health of uh, you know, children in elementary and middle schools. So these are elementary and middle school um, students who go through, you know, there's a lot of stress. Even in kids this, uh, you know, this age, there's a lot of stress, not just studies related, but, you know, and identity crisis, peer pressure, bullying, self-esteem. Um, and I, I know from your uh, book that I read that you went through some of that yourself as a kid. Um, any words of wisdom for them? Uh, I, I mean, I think the first thing to do is... Uh, I mean, there were things in school that happened when, you know, I was a very effeminate child and, you know, there were kids in my building and neighborhood that used to make fun of me. And I know it really got me very, yeah. uh, it, I, it drew me into a shell, you know, and I remember that most of my problems came from there. Did I realize that actually what it did is it, it, it also woke me up to hmm. the fact that I have to tap into my strengths to do something that I am comfortable doing for me to prove that I'm, I, I am somebody who can rise above this. Mm. So I think uh, I went into tapping into my... So when I, when, when I used to play sport and I wasn't good at it because I was overweight and I was effeminate and the boys made fun of me, I was like, okay, this may not be my... This thing. is not my strength. So maybe my strength is something as I realized mm. my strength was theatre. Mm. It was elocution. Mm. And uh, the irony is that the kids who, uh, who, uh, who was house captain who made fun of me hmm. because of what I had to come and ask me eventually to join the team uh, to basically for my house. You know, we had houses, where red house, blue house. We, we, our, uh -huh. our students were divided into four houses. Okay. And he once came to me and he was like, you know what, uh, you must take part in the elocution. We need the points for our house, you know. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'll do it. And, you know, and that was the irony. Yeah. That, you know, he needed me eventually yeah. to come and do, because I was so good at drama, theater, uh -huh. elocution. That for our, our house to win, they needed a balance of both because he was not doing so well with sport. <laughs> right. And I'm like, and that made me feel great. For yeah. me, I didn't throw it back at him. Yeah. But I was like, to me, that was a victory. Yeah. So I went into my head and I was like, either I can resent this completely <laughs> as a child or quietly go into a strength of mine. Yeah. It could be playing a violin. It could be playing a guitar. Mm. It could be being amazing at academics. Find that strength. Find that strength. And don't be mediocre at everything. Because there's something that everyone is That you at. can excel. But make, and I wish, that, I wish the parents would realize that. Yeah. If your child is, is, is not considered normal, for the lack of a better way of saying it, compared to the others, there's something they do that is better than the others. And leverage that strength. Yeah. And that's what I did it on my own. But I realized that that would be my motto to how I would raise my kids. Mm. If I see they have a spark as a singer, yeah. Dancer. Yeah. Boy, girl, doesn't matter. Yeah. They will do something and make sure you encourage that. Right. It could be sport, it could be the field of drama, it could be the field of uh, the liberal arts, it could be education, academics, right. or it could be anything. Everyone's good at something. Right. And like you said, then work would be play for them.